Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. DB Manchester with Rowan Telecenter. I've been the trusted partner of schools, government, and local businesses for their critical communication needs for nearly 75 years. We'd like to take this time to familiarize yourself with the power and flexibility of our Telecenter universe in our common paging system that we've deployed in over 100 locations just here in the Portland, Vancouver metro area alone. To begin with, I just want to talk to you about the devices that you're seeing here up on the video today uh, and talk about some of the variations that you might see depending on what you decide to go forward with. In the top right of your screen, you see a uh, status light. It is a two-segment uh, multicolored LED. It can display seven different colors and multiple flash patterns. And we typically see these deployed outside of classrooms or at the end of hallways. They can be used both to indicate uh, audio status in that room or zone, as well as emergency status. And we will showcase that as part of this demo. Just uh, on the right half of the screen there, just uh, down into the left of that status light, is the speaker clock combo. This is actually two separate devices. So this here is what we call our small message board. And then this is just a speaker mounted in the back hole. The small message board could be surface mounted on the wall outside of this uh, baffle. And then that would free you up to place the speakers in a round enclosure or, or a separate square. You could put them on the ceiling or on the wall. You would be able to surface mount or recess them at that point. In this particular, um, implementation, this baffle is recessed into the wall. Below that, we have our uh, standard call switch. This is a two button emergency and normal call switch. You may also see these deployed just as a normal button only, or you may see it deployed as an emergency and check in, which would be blue. And we'll go all over those in the demo as well. Uh, up Top and to the left of the screen is our large message board. The large message board is twice as wide and twice as tall as the small message board here that's on the classroom speaker. Uh, it is a two line display and just these two this are also the same in that they use extremely high brightness, three color uh, LEDs. So we can display green, yellow, or red uh, we can mix and match those in the messages, and it does not matter if this is a high glass environment. LED, unlike LCD, will show up beautifully even in the brightest of situations. And uh, that is also a, a two-line display, so um, if your message is such that you want both lines to display at the same time, the large message board can do it, splitting it. Uh, top and bottom, and you'll see some of those demos here um, about every five minutes. I have a message going across. If you were to play a two-line message down here on a single message board, um, you would have the option of displaying just line one, just line two, or concatenating them and playing one after the other. The other device that you see here on your screen is the admin console. Everything except for the admin console on your screen is to scale. The admin console is not. To give you an idea, there is the size of the uh, speaker message board combo and there is the size of the admin console. So it is a regular um, desk size device. It looks very similar to a telephone. I won't call it that. Um, the phone is something that you can use to uh, make an outside communication. The admin console is used to uh, do anything on the system that it is programmed to do, and it can access many of the functions that would not be accessible through, um, say, a desk phone integration. So we are capable of integrating this with your, your desk phones as well in order to make live pages or perform some functions without going all the way to the admin console, but the admin console is your um, primary means of interacting with the system in the event of uh, other phone or network type outages. 
Also on the bottom left-hand side of your screen here, most of our customers integrate these systems with their access control, where they would have a lockdown button. Your access control is responsible for locking doors and securing them. We let it do what it does best. And then at the same time, the access control system communicates with the telecenter U paging and intercom uh, in order to play those messages, which is what it does best. So during a lockdown or other type of emergency, uh, you don't need to have um, anybody worried about making the live page. You can have a pre-recorded announcement, gives them all kinds of instructions on what they need to do, as well as um, the message boards can be used to relay additional information and we will demo those as well. And then last but not least is uh, it is capable of integrating with fire alarm, general fire alarm system. Um, it does not provide any UL listed enunciation or similar, but what it can do is it can alter the system operation based on whether you are in an active fire alarm or not. And I will demo that. The use case for that is, um, you know, some of our customers have sat down with their fire marshals or other authority having jurisdiction and said, uh, we believe that lockdown should be a higher priority than a fire alarm. If the two come in at the same time, we want the lockdown to take precedence. And in some of those cases, the AHJs agreed, other times they have not. In my demo here, it is uh, to code, and code says that uh, during a fire alarm, other devices will be silent. So I will show how that works in this demo. And then one other thing that I will show in this demo is uh, there is a web interface. All of the programming for this system is done through a, a web UI rather than a dedicated laptop and a dedicated piece of software and a serial cable like most of the others are or were in the past. And so it's very intuitive and easy to use. I'll show you how to interact with it or what it's capable of doing, uh, creating bell schedules, setting calendar, and a few other functions that you might need to do uh, from the web interface or want to do. The first thing I would mention is that the message boards, both small and large, they are capable of, um, in, this, in my demo here, they're displaying an alternating time and date, uh, five seconds and one second, and that is what is programmed for their idle screen. We have had customers request, say, in the, um, in the theater that the idle screen be blank. We can certainly do that. We can have it be a different idle screen on some message boards than others. Um, and then we can also zone all the message boards. So you don't have to uh, send the same message to every board in the entire facility at the same time. You can smartly target are these going to classrooms? Are they going to uh, common areas? Are they going to second floor? Um, or in the case of the auditorium, uh, we want to do something different for the auditorium. The other thing is uh, with the message boards, much of the message board use cases are pre-developed uh, messages. And that's what you see going across my screen here every five minutes is a pre-developed uh, message that is then put in a schedule, so it runs on a particular time. We see those being used for um, things like uh, reminders, maybe every Wednesday they have to go pick up a new packet of information from the main office, and, or, uh, or they're gonna do a pep rally by grade level because we can't have everybody in the gymnasium at the same time, and so you would target a pre canned message on schedule to certain message boards and not have to uh, manually fire that off throughout the day. They also have messages that you will see in this demo come across during emergencies. The system is very capable of smartly managing things like lockdown, lockout, tsunami, earthquake, uh, shelter in place, um, any of those emergency types that you might think about having to do in a uh, facilities such as yours, we can put additional textual message uh, on those message boards uh, so that when the audio message is done, they can continue to see it on the screen. 
Also, I have programmed in my demo very few bells, uh, but most of these systems are going into schools. And uh, when you do a bell schedule, uh, my bells in the demo are on the hour. And if you happen to see it, you will also notice that for the visually impaired, I have closed captioned the bells on my message board. So it will say bell in red. And then also, not even just for the hearing impaired, but we see many of our customers, they complain about students uh, there in the hallways. They've got their uh, earbuds in or their headphones on and they're just, they're looking at their device or they're just listening to something and they, they can't hear um, verbal announcements. So maybe a message board or a strobe or similar catches their attention and they're able to get that critical communication without the audio message that accompanies it. And then um, the, the devices that I spoke of here, this lockdown, this fire alarm, these all are in our demo through what's called an auxiliary IO. It's a relay module. I'm not showing you those right now, but we have the capability to integrate this system through uh, dry contact inputs and outputs. Very common, uh, we have them at almost all of our implementations, they are integrated with access control for those lockdowns. We also have many um, installations where they are integrated with their, their intrusion system so that we can play messages throughout the building, such as um, alarm zone arming or uh, auto arming or uh, entry delay to remind people when they walk in the building that they have to go disable that intrusion panel. All that's done by dry contact. And then also another module that uh, we won't demo here but is available is um, a music input or a line input module. Many of our customers are using those uh, to bring music into the intercom system. They program it either uh, just as a manual interaction where they do a fun Friday, uh, play music a certain time on Friday, or one of the best use cases I've seen for it, uh, one of our customers is using it in their bell schedule. And so the way they do that is uh, at the end of class, there is no bell. At the end of class, music starts. Four minutes later, music stops. One minute after that, bell goes off. You may get up and move about when the music is playing. When it stops, you got 60 seconds to find your classroom after that the bell means you are tardy. Give you a quick demonstration of the call-in capability. If you have two-way intercom to your classrooms, you are able to have these uh, call switches. It doesn't matter how many buttons you have. I can program even a single button option to do all of the things that you could get out of a two or more button uh, call switch, but it is for convenience to be able to have these uh, dedicated color-coded buttons. So in the case of a normal call-in, the classroom uh, student or teacher needs to reach the front office. Um, they press that normal button. You can see on the admin console over here, there is a normal call-in from room 101. Outside the classroom, you can see that this status light is blinking that there is an active call-in. So I'm going to go ahead and answer that from the admin console. Yes, yeah. room 101. Go ahead. And I'm in a two-way conversation right now. The room is is uh, using the speaker as both its speaker and microphone, and I am talking in that handset of the uh, admin console. Uh, the other one, of course, is emergency. Uh, the difference between these two buttons is that an emergency call-in has a higher priority on the admin console. So if there was any um, normal call-ins already up here on this admin console, the emergencies would roll to the top. And of course, the way um, I like to teach the kids that we interact with is an emergency is a problem an adult can't solve. So if the teacher is uh, incapacitated or out of the room or um, is otherwise being held up perhaps by another adult uh, and is unable to resolve a problem and that needs taken care of by another adult. Any student can be taught to just go press 
the emergency button. It's completely hands-free. You don't have to know what number to dial from their desk phone or have a cell phone in their possession. They just go press the button. If we get involved in the design phase, we do ask that these call switches, or we recommend that these call switches, and perhaps even the ceiling mounted speakers, if you use ceiling mount, be located in a corner of the room away from the door. This would be the huddle area, the secure area that they would be sheltering in, uh, in the event of some sort of lockdown emergency. Um, if I wanted to call a room directly, I could do that. I have multiple classrooms here, so I'm gonna call room 102. And I just picked up the admin console and call 102. It's coming out a different speaker overhead right now. And um, you don't see that on the screen. There's nothing visual, it's just a voice conversation. Next thing I wanna demo for you is that lockdown integration. And while I'm doing the lockdown integration, I'm going to interrupt it with a fire alarm just so that you can see how that fire alarm integration um, can be higher priority or lower priority. In my case, the fire alarm is higher priority. So you're gonna see the lockdown start. I'm gonna interrupt it with the fire alarm. And then when I come out of fire alarm by clearing it, the system smartly restarts the previous emergency. So you're gonna see that lockdown start. Now I could do this through the web interface. I could do it through a mobile app. I can show all those to you later. But for right now, we're going to use what everybody's familiar with, and that's this mushroom button right here on the wall in the main office. And here they go. Lockdown. Locks. Lights. Out of sight. So there it was. I was in the middle of playing my lockdown message, and somebody activated the fire alarm. And I told you in my case, I programmed fire to be higher priority than the lockdown emergency. And we haven't lost visibility that we're in lockdown. It says so right here on the admin console. And it even says that um, we are, we have a time that we're in lockdown. We saw there was a check-in timer. I just checked those rooms in as safe. But we simultaneously see that we are in fire alarm for X amount of time. I gave you a, a, an intro earlier that said the message boards can display additional information. Here it is, the two-line message board. I have decided to display fire with the count up timer of how long we're in fire as the classrooms are just displaying fire themselves. Now, I'm not making any noise. I don't have to display these messages. I can program them to be completely blank. Maybe I don't want them to flash. I can program them not to flash. You can see that my lockdown, I don't know if you caught that when we first started, my lockdown was this top segment of my status LED in the top right of your screen, it is now dark because our lockdown is, is uh, superseded right now by the fire. The green means that this room is safe in a lockdown emergency. We, in this case, I have programmed the lockdown emergency to require that rooms that are able tell the main office that they're safe. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this fire alarm. I can only do so from the fire alarm system. And I do that my demo by resetting the switch and lockdown. Locks, lights, out of sight. Lockdown, locks, lights, out of sight. So there we go, we went right back into our lockdown emergency. Now, we have a check-in timer I mentioned. You can see the room as a, outside the classroom, there's a blinking red to tell me I'm in lockdown. Completely programmable, but I follow SRP colors. And you can see there's a timer here, it's expiring, and it just expired. These rooms, 101 and 102, they have not checked in yet as being safe. Now, room 102, he did just check in, so he clears off my screen automatically. He did that by pressing this call switch on the wall. Room 101 hasn't checked in yet. So I, at the front office, I'm going to pick up this admin console, and I'm going to drop in silently. And I'm just listening. I don't hear anything, so I'm going to say room 101, you've got to press the check-in button. They reach up and they check themselves in as well. So during a lockdown emergency, I did not do a pre-announce tone, so they did not hear that I was listening in on the room. Normally, you would hear that. 
uh, in a lockdown, I recommend that programming setting because perhaps the threat actor is in the room and we don't want them to know that we are um, visual or audibly listening in on the room to make sure it's clear. Okay, well, guess what? We just found out that the intruder is not actually in our building. So I'm going to change this from a lockdown to a lockout. This time I'm going to do it from the admin console. So here we go. I'm just going to I'm asked for a PIN number. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. Lockout. Secure the perimeter. So again, pre-recorded announcement gave us additional instructions. Because a lockout is typically business as usual inside the building, notice my classrooms have just gone back to their idle screen. I don't need to display any message there. But a lot of times my customers will take these uh, message, these large message boards or small message boards even, will mount them in a hallway. Um, some of them are pretty, putting them right at the exterior vestibules, security vestibules. And that is the quick reminder. They also mount one of these uh, status lights out by the security vestibule. So, you know, it's business as usual inside the building. And so you, you forget what you're doing. The bells are still going off and in this case. And so you start to walk out the door and you're greeted by the message board and the blinking blue lights, SRP color for um, uh, lockout. And uh, so there we go. That's how some of those work. We're going to clear this from our admin console as well. Attention. The emergency has ended. Attention. The emergency has ended. Now, programmatically, I mentioned uh, schedules, so bell schedules. We can set these for every emergency. In my demo, uh, there's not enough bells for you to hear what was going on. But during lockdown, um, I suppress bell schedules. During a lockout, I do not. The reason I suppress them during a lockdown is the last thing I want is for you to go into lockdown at 11.59 in the morning and at noon is lunchtime, the lunch bell goes off, Johnny's Pavlov response kicks in and he gets up out of his secure area and goes to leave the room. So we, we suppress schedules when we're in an emergency and we re-enable them when we come out of the emergency. Some of the other things that we will look at are the web interface. I'm gonna switch over to my desktop for just a second. And I'll show you that web UI. Uh, we have active directory integration capability with this. So what that means is your users do not need to know and you do not need to manage separate usernames and passwords. Those are uh, pulled from active directory. Um, it is role based. So you can assign different permissions to a role and you can assign different roles, to different users. Most commonly, you'll see things like the maintenance staff being able to adjust volumes, the front office staff being able to manage the schedules and the calendar and um, audio ex exclusions, which I'll show you some of those right now. First one I want to show you, very flexible in this system, uh, tools, audio controls. And in the past, um, you had either a, a, a little potentiometer that was built into the ceiling speakers, or you had a wall control for volume, uh, or lacking those, the teacher had a big old piece of cardboard that they taped over their speaker in order to adjust their volume. None of those were uh, desirable. And the reason is that that same speaker is the microphone. So when you turn the volume down at the speaker and you turn the, the, or you put a piece of cardboard over it because it was too loud, that means when I in the front office needed to have a communication with your room in a two-way communication, I couldn't hear you either. So you didn't hear me and I didn't hear you. And worse, uh, during an emergency, nobody got the message. So now with Telecenter U, the, uh, the speakers are all IP driven. And so we have volume control within software. So if I look at my rooms right now, I told you there were two classrooms in my demo. I actually have a slider right here. I can adjust the volume of each individual room. Now, I don't anticipate that you're going to do this uh, regularly, but this year it just so happens that Jane, fresh out of college, she got hired by the district and she's in room 101. 
she's got perfect hearing and so you just leave that maybe in the middle or on the low side because uh, her students and herself can hear the message great. Uh, next year Jane switches rooms and John who's uh, really close to retirement he has been listening to students for too many years his hearing is not the same as Jane's and perhaps at the beginning of the school year you turn room 101 up to you know, a seven or eight to meet his needs. To the right, uh, we also have the ability to exclude certain audio types from reaching an individual classroom or age zone. And how that would apply is say uh, you had an IP module for your library and your library calls the front office uh, in the morning and they say, we're going to be doing standardized testing today. Please don't bother us with any pages or bells, or even in this case, let's say they don't even want music. They want no disruptions today. So even if that speaker is targeted for pages, bells, or music, they will stay silent with one exception. In an emergency, my message will get out. In an emergency all page, I will ignore the exclusions and my message will get out to every speaker in the system. Additionally, under an emergency, we can mandatorily set a minimum volume level. So if a teacher says, I just want my room at a one or two, I really don't want to be disturbed all day long with these volume with the uh, announcements of bells maybe that's their regular setting during an emergency I can say too bad so sad every speaker must play at a minimum volume of seven when we get out of emergency mode you can go back to your three or your two whatever that's fine but during an emergency we can override that cannot do these things with wall mounted volume controls cardboard or tweaker adjusted potentiometers. Um, another nice thing about the exclusions, although I just turned them off, making the sounds re-enabled for that particular room, we can programmatically turn them on and off by schedule. By default, the exclusions clear at midnight. This means you don't have to worry about somebody saying we're doing standardized testing today and forgetting to turn the bells back on tomorrow. They will be back on normally um, under the default programming. Another thing that I wanted to show you is we can play any sound file in the past. Your intercom systems were restricted to the eight or 10 built-in factory sounds. Um, we can upload any wave or MP3 file. If you don't like one of the factory um, bell tones, no problem, we can add sounds to the system. You can add sounds to the system. Um, it's very easy to do right here through the web UI. During an emergency, we can manage what happens. In my emergencies, um, I, I told you that, for example, for fire alarm, uh, I am just displaying a message on the message boards that says fire. Um, for my lockdown, in my demo, I am firing a relay to tell the access control system I've played your message. I'm putting a, a different message on the large and small message boards. I'm playing <clears throat> a pre-recorded message, in this case called uh, SRP lockdown. So all of those are configurable. We decide on each emergency, <laughs> is it above or below fire alarm? What type of flash pattern is it on the status lights, if you purchase those, do we suppress schedules? Do we require check-in? Do we suppress the pre-announced tones once that minimum volume level? Very, very flexible. Um, the other thing is bell scheduling. <clears throat> I mentioned in the past, you needed a dedicated laptop, dedicated piece of software, serial cable, all these things in order to program bells. Um, here we have a web interface. Uh, I'll show you what my regular schedule looks like. It is a series of actions. Now mine doesn't look quite like yours will because I have a lot of pre-recorded message board 
messages in here, but here is, um, I'm, I'm changing the functionality of the system at 6.59, 59 in the morning by setting a, a trigger called office hours set, and I'm showing a message on the message boards. I'm playing a tone at 7 a.m. What am I playing? I'm playing a medium ding three times. In between my bells, I'm displaying lots of message board messages, and then, um, you know, here's that pep rally message coming at 17 past the hour. <clears throat> but anyways, this whole schedule can be as complex as you would like. Mine happens to be four pages long, and we get all the way to the end. And we set another uh, register in the system uh, to change how the call-ins are being routed at the end of the day to a different, a different admin console or a different SIP phone. That's a schedule. There's no dates on it. It's just times. Once you have the schedule set, your calendar view looks very similar to an Outlook calendar. And so all of the schedules you created are here on the left-hand side. You can put a recurrence on them. So I could take a regular day schedule and I could say, recur this thing weekly, every one week on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, but maybe not Wednesdays. I would start at the beginning of the school year. I'd end it at the end of the school year. And um, then I would save that and it would populate out into the calendar. Then I could go do the same thing with my other schedule for late start Wednesdays or similar. At this point, you have a fully populated calendar. You could go through and you could click on individual occurrences and you could say, remove that one. Perhaps that was a holiday. Um, this whole week is a holiday. So we're just going to start deleting our holidays and so on and so forth. And we would save it. And that's how our bells would operate. Um, one of the common complaints about older systems or other systems is, you know, how do I turn the bells off? It's, uh, it's, it's summer break. I don't want to annoy the neighbors. No problem. You just did it. You, you drive, drag and drop it or you set it as a recurrence on the calendar. Um, so take care of your district calendar and your bells will only occur on the days that you tell them to occur on. You don't have to go back and make changes. Uh, one thing you will need to change, of course, is if you have a snow day, um, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to make sure to add to this calendar halfway through the year. I might do it for you at the beginning of the school year, but halfway through the year, I don't know what's going on, so you're going to need to edit the calendar as appropriate. I want to show you another thing too. Um, from my admin console, let's say we we come in in the morning. It is a snow day. And I don't want to go to the web UI and turn the bells off. I have a program button here. There we go. Bells are now silenced for the day. It'll go off again at, uh, it'll, it'll reset back at midnight, but now they're turned off for the day. This is also used, people do this if they go to say uh, an assembly. So they have a regular schedule throughout the day, but then come assembly time, they just reach up here, they silence the bells because they don't know how long it's gonna last. When the assembly gets over, they turn their bells back on and the schedule picks up right where it was. So they don't even have to visit the web UI at all. Some other functions on the admin console that I, I can show you. These soft keys down here, there's four at a time on the screen. Uh, they are used here, these little gray buttons below it. I can program up to 64 of them. I can do lots of different things. In this particular case, I programmed a lockdown and a lockout emergency on the admin console and I pin protected those. That's an option for any of them. Um, I also had the, the all clear, an emergency all page. I told you that's, uh, it, it ignores exclusions. These are all choices you could make in your system. I can program it however. On the main screen, there was all page. Zone page we didn't look at yet. Zone page jumps you to another screen where you can choose which zones you wanted to um, play the, make a page at. There was a button that jumped us to bells and music. Um, 
again, all of these are, are configurable. Emer functions was the screen I took you to already. I have some other uh, demo emergencies here just to show, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but here we go. We just went into a tsunami emergency. My tsunami emergency, the only thing it's doing is I've had customers ask what are the different colors that are available. The tsunami emergency is displaying the pastel colors um, that we have. There's a white, a yellow, a cyan, a magenta. Yeah, uh, yeah, looks like that's all there. And then the other one is, um, I called it the muted colors. And this is uh, red, orange, green, blue, red, orange, green, blue. So they're, they're a little, um, they're a little, uh, bright there on the camera so they don't show up quite as well as they could. And if you're if you have lots of calls coming in at once, I've programmed in a button here to silence them or to cancel them. Perhaps it was just testing and you don't want to go answer everyone individually, just cancel them all. I can jump you back to home. And lots of functions. Whatever you'd like to do, I can probably do it on the admin console. I want to show you real quick. I got a lot of questions in my demos about how can we use this to maintain compliance with our jurisdictions to prove that we've done our drills or an after action review of what happened during an emergency. So I've come here to tools, event history reports. I'm selecting the type of events that I want to report on uh, in this case, I've selected call-ins, check-ins, and emergencies, my school, and my start and end dates. When I exported that, I got a, a CSV file, and here's what it looks like. I can see that at uh, 10.06 this morning, there was a lockdown emergency at my demo school. It came in from that auxiliary relay that we talked about, so that would have been my security system. Um, and everything that happened. Now I see room 101 and 102, their timer expired, but then they checked in normal. So all that occurred uh, this morning about 10 o'clock. Then I had another emergency. This was actually during our uh, demo. Here's one. Um, we had a 1241 lockdown emergency, also came in via relay. That's because I used the mushroom button. And then uh, room 102 checked in at 1242.16. I'm sorry, uh, at 1242.16, the timers expired for both rooms. Room 102 checked in 10 seconds after the timer expired. And at 1242.53, room 101 checked in. Um, you can see we then downgraded it to a lockout. And later I was testing the, or I was demoing the different colors, which was that tsunami and earthquake and so forth. All of those types uh, are available in that event history. Um, if it was a drill, you could start all the emergencies as drills. You would be able to show that uh, you know you, you drilled at X, Y, and Z dates throughout the year, and here's how long it took each of the rooms to respond and check in. Here I'm demoing uh, a web status page of the emergencies. I can see at a glance all of the schools in my district that are in an emergency uh, and what type of emergency they're in and what if the emergency has check-ins, uh, what the status of that check-in is. I can silence these for just a moment. Um, I've checked in one of my rooms, but not the other. So if we do a view of the room status, we can see that room 101 still is not checked in. I'm going to go ahead and check them in, uh, and then the um, the rooms will all disappear from that list. If we were to go back, uh, refresh this emergency status page, you can see it's still in a lockdown. Every room is checked in. I could clear it as I already demoed from the admin console. I could also clear the emergency right here from the web UI. Attention, the emergency has ended. Attention, the emergency has ended. I 
just missed it there. I should not have stopped my video, but we had a bell go off and it was closed captioned, as I had mentioned earlier. So um, there was that. I invite you to ask any questions that you have via email uh, back to your account manager and we will get those answered for you as quickly as possible and I look forward to working with you.